Today with us on Stuart Talk, we're blessed, we're honored to have with us the, the three M's, music, media, and modeling. She's killing it. Um, she's a woman of God, a producer. Um, she serves. Um, her oil does show. Um, she has a heart after God, um, and she just... I'm going to be here with us today to dive in, talking about her journey and getting some inspiration and hear what God has on her heart. Today, we have the one, the only, Ariel Sutton. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So how did it start? Was it always media, music, and modeling and 3 okay. Or like what, what transpired first and what age was you? Oh, OK. No, it hasn't always been those things. I think somewhere in the last few years, I've attempted to get the three together. And now okay. in this season, they're actually like I was looking at my page and I was like, I finally like it's finally happening, you know. So it's it hasn't been a striving thing. It's just kind of worked itself out with prayers and, and being faithful. Um, I've always sang. I started singing in the choir, of course, you know, the usual story in church <laughs> growing up. <Yeah. laughs> um, in 2014, I actually moved out to Dallas. And I got into modeling just by being nosy. I was talking to this guy at church and he was like, oh, a friend of mine is having a, a grand opening. His, it's Carlos Vincent Photography. Shout out to Carlos. 2017. Mm -hmm. And I went and that's when my modeling kicked off. So I had all these photos and there were some um, auditions. They were doing auditions for modeling, for stage plays and for Internet radio. So I was like, I have all these pictures. I might as well go. So I, the same day I interviewed for the radio and also for modeling. So that's when I picked up the media, the modeling and the media kind of together. It started, they started together. <laughs> so when you uh, first started with the uh, modeling, was it people there? Like, you know how on social media, people are looking at their pictures and they're feeling some type of way. It got to be perfect. Did you start off like that? Or you just like learned and you said, okay, this is my best pose. This is how I do it. Or was the pictures and how exact the perfect the picture was? Did that mean anything to it? Did they have an emotional effect on you? The emotional effect was how it came together. Again, it was like, I really feel like a lot of this has been God because I found myself in these spaces and he's answer, he answers like whispered prayers of like, oh, it would be cool to, to it would be cool to model. And then this shows up. So we wow. were just doing test shots. And like I said, I won a photo shoot. That's how that started. But we were doing all these, we did four different looks and I had a guitar at the time. And I, that's, I just wanted to shoot my guitar. <laughs> I was starting to play bass guitar. I was like, it'll shoot, it'll look good with my bass guitar and my Afro. So we did that. But the pictures, they they just showed, they came out well. Um, mm -hmm. They were very creative and like, we just clicked. And I found myself in spaces with musicians and producers and things like that also. So that's one of the things I think um, that kind of lets me know that's a vein for me because I've never had to strive in those areas. It's always been me kind of in my own way, <laughs> which we can get into that later. But um, yeah, it's been no striving when, when those pockets have hit. And I just, I've been going with it. With no yeah. plan. I, don't, I didn't plan to be a model. I didn't plan to be on radio. Even with this song, I didn't plan to put that out. I was just, I was pushing and, and it's just taking off. So the responses to all of them have been overwhelming. And so what I hear is you stay close to God because you said you can hear God. So you had to be close. You had to be stirring yourself up. You had to be grounded. You had to be working your faith. What does yeah. faith mean to you and how did faith help you get to this point? Ooh. So, of course, you know, faith is the substance of things not seen, th things of hope for, but not seen. And it's just um, I think faith for me has been um, a work in action, if that makes sense. So what I, what I mean when I say that is, of course, we can't see certain things. But we have these inclinations where our sphere, we have our heart's desires. Right. But in yeah. faith, we believe God for certain things. But are we preparing ourselves to receive and achieve those things? So I would say my faith journey has been, OK, these are things that I want. I'll use an example of a family because currently I'm single with no children, but I've always prepared. I, I hit a point in my life where I was like, OK, let me prepare myself financially. Let me prepare myself. So when I do have children, I don't want to have to you know, take maternity leave or have to go back to work and things like that. No man in sight, no, no kids in sight or anything like that. Right. So I just, I, that's, the, that's one of the better examples a practical example of what faith has meant to me is these are the things that I desire, even though I may not have the strategy yet or I don't have the resources for it yet. 
I'm walking as though I am. So yeah. that's, that's what my faith walk is look like. I, I think y'all was at 325, but I heard um, a panel that you were on and you was talking about God make you in your singleness. And you said you used to be like, God, I want this. Give me, 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 me. But yeah. what do you have to offer? What are your motives? What do you want when that person come? Or what are you going to have lined up? Like you're looking for the person, but are you together? Now, where right. did come from for you to have that inside of you to know that it was a trial and error did the holy spirit give it to you because that's a great way to look at it a lot of times people i want this i want this it got to be this but let me look mm -hmm. myself in the mirror what do i got what do i need to be focusing on so when i see that person yeah absolutely trial and error and then all the trial and error first but just wondering so i was i was hitting i was dating you know and the same cycles were happening i would meet someone it would go like a certain amount of time and then it seemed like the person would disappear. So I got into the space like, Lord, what's taking so long? Or, you know, when are you going to send me my person? And it was like, you're not, and that's when the Holy Spirit spoke. And it was like, you're not waiting on the person. Like, I'm waiting on you. Wow. It was, I'm waiting on you. So all these things you're asking me for, do you do that? Like, so my horizontal relationships with people were actually yeah. a reflection of my vertical relationship with God because I was inconsistent. Yeah. I wasn't submitting. God, I wasn't, we didn't have a consistent relationship. I could talk about it. I could pray. But in my, if I was really being honest with myself and using the Bible as a mirror versus a looking glass, I was not doing the things that I was expecting of other people. Yeah. So that's when the shift happened. And it's like, okay, what are you doing out of reverence? Or what are you doing? Because you expect me to do something for you. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Um, and what went <laughs> Do you integrate your beliefs and your creative process within your industry that you do, whether it's music, media, or the modern? Okay, um, I can start with the modeling because, of course, modeling industry, it's a lot of uh, what I noticed was, so I'm a little bit older than the, the, the starter model. And <laughs> I noticed I noticed a lot of the, the, lady, the young ladies would, you know, um, anything that popped up, any opportunity, they yeah. felt like they had to take that. So there were a lot of them doing boudoir or showing their bodies in certain ways. And I felt like I, I was different in that industry because I, I didn't feel like I had to do that. You know, my yeah. body doesn't belong to me, but also in order for me to get exposure or an opportunity, I also understand that I don't have to show my body or over-sexualize myself because yeah. I if I'm representing God, I'll do so at all times. And there was actually, I was in a fashion show and one of the designers actually came to me and was like, hey, I have these bathing suits, but you probably wouldn't. I don't think you would wear anything like that. So that spoke to me as my presence. Like it wasn't a disrespectful thing, you know, but because of the way I carried myself, they kind of already knew what they would or would not kind of get out of me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you say to somebody that's young and inquiring about getting into modeling? Because I have a little cousin and that's why this interview is uh, going to be important and special too for me to share because it's a lot of people that wants to um, start their modern career. They're taking positions, the pictures, they're, they don't know how and what's the next step. So what would that look like for a person that's starting that's green? If you're green, ask questions, get you somebody, like get a mentor, find somebody that knows the industry um, that could help you. When photographers will approach you from Instagram, DMs, you get these random emails, but kind of always have a place to check. When they talk about walking in wise counsel and having words of wisdom, I would advise to always double check, fact check, background check, whoever you're going to interact with, you know, and you don't have to do everything for money and you don't have to take every, every opportunity is not a good or God opportunity. So just yeah. just really vet your opportunities and make sure they align with your values. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you all share an experience with your faith that it played a significant role in the decisions you had to make with a project you were involved with. Ooh, with a project I was involved with. Um, I think part of this project recently. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that one recently. So a display of my faith was not feeling like I needed to bandwagon. So not, I did, I did not do this. <laughs> I did not release this song conventionally at all. I just I almost pulled a Beyonce there, I say, but <laughs> I just, I put it out there because it was like, I had to get used to my voice, you know? So um, I wrote the song a couple years ago and a few of the producers I was working with, they were like, oh, you should sing like this, or you should sing about this. And I'm like, that's not where my heart is. You know, yeah. that's not, that's not what I represent, or that's not even the artist that I want to present myself as. So yeah. in that, it's like if it may, it, if it means I have to delay a little bit to get this project out in order for it to represent me, and I'm comfortable, you know, continuing on or see, let let my grandmother hear, you know, things like that. 
then that's the choice that I'll make. So I decided to wait. Yeah. And you were confident in that because, you know, you had Holy Spirit with you to be able to give you the discernment and to guide you with that. And I, we, uh, we love the vibe check. Bless that. Shout out to Paul. He <laughs> Weeks we gonna yes. have Paul on, so yeah, you did great with that, and I like how y'all switched the flow up. But I'm like, man, so that let me like start going to search for the music. Where can people find your music if they look in or if they want to hear what you know you saying or your songs and all like that? So Pass Me Not is out on all streaming platforms. I'm excited. Um, it's been a little over a week. My first release, my first single. That's the first one out. So it is pushing me to get the rest of the things out of my voice notes <laughs> on my phone. Um, but it's available on all platforms: Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube Music, Title. Um, it's just the response has been overwhelming. So I'm super excited about it, and I even appreciate you. Like when you said you saw the vibe check and reached out, so I'm honored to be here and to have, to have this opportunity just to speak as well. Yeah, because and even you like very anointed, like even I seen like even from the one time you were on stage, you know, when you were telling your testimony, when you were speaking yes. the power of the anointing, like when you were on there, just and even hearing the message, you know, as I did my research, as I looked at different things, you really have a passion for God. You're not just doing it like you're really diving into it. You're really speaking the word on a lot of things that you post on a lot of your videos. You're speaking, you're putting that word in it because the God word is not going to come back to us void and we have to work that word in order to be able to help us get through many situations and that's what even apostles say you know what what is the word saying about it look at the bible like read it it's yeah. there you know so your videos are not just inspirational you're giving people words so now they're gonna be like man let me go read this or the next time they see it the word is what's sticking out and we need more people like you to be able to present that you know and still have many gifts and talents that you have so now you can do it whether in ministry whether in music the media or even on the modeling thing you know god has put us around different people to be able to speak the word and even bring people to christ you know because we're called to just outside the four walls as well as the church you know so yeah. that's what's great about you you know um you, you're a woman of many different hats you know and you wear I am. <laughs> <laughs> you wear Absolutely. and wear where, where did you get the song title for and what was the um like what was the motive that you had beside making the song yeah, so uh, Pass Me Not, the old hymn, you know, the, the slow Pass Me Not, oh, gentle, that's that one. I okay. used to sit in my car um, in 2018. It was one of the, like, one of the darkest years, and I really think that's where my relationship with God really shifted, And but I used to sit in my car at work, and I'm just like, Lord, like, why do, why do these, the same thing kind of, it was, it was a cycle. I was in a cycle, and it was just like, why is this keep happening? But everything around me was dark. Like I was battling with suicidal thoughts. I was stressed at work. It's like I would pull around the corner and I was sitting, I would cry. And that song, it was just like, pass me not, oh, gentle savior, like hear my humble cry. That's how that song goes. Um, when I was younger, I was in the choir and uh, Miss Cousin Verlene Jackson, <laughs> that woman has a, she has a strong and powerful voice. Um, she is still at the same church, Sunday South Baptist Church where I grew up. But she would um, she would have this part where she would just yell out like, master, I'm crying. And that's what would resonate with me. So I was sitting in the car crying and singing this song. So fast forward, um, I'm back. I moved back home during COVID. Home is Georgia. I moved back home and I'm sitting there. I actually wrote a song, a couple of songs before Pass Me Not. They weren't uh, scriptural, but it was just like me being petty or just getting stuff off my chest. But I wrote a very vulnerable song, which kind of took the lid off. So then I was like, okay, let me think through my experiences. And I was like, because past me not, I love that song. And I could keep hearing the master, please, master, please. It's like, I want it to be a song of victory. So it's still telling like, hey, God, I'm here. I'm crying. I'm calling out to you. But I know in the end that you're going, that we will have victory. The battle's already won. Like no matter what the fight is, we know how the story ends, you know? So it, it's past me not, please don't pass me by. But in the meantime, at the end of the song, I say, like, he is full of mercy and compassion. He's yeah. kind. And he is. So it's I, I just really want my music and any, anything that I put out and anything moving forward, I really want it to, even if it starts in a story or a low place, it has to end with a message of victory because Jesus rose with victory and power in his hands. And that's where I, that's where I want my story to go. Yeah. And a lot of times, just like in the Bible, they say, I have given such and such to you. You have the victory, but that don't mean you ain't got to go. You still got to go to that. Right. Already yep. telling you, you got the victory, but you still have to go for it. 
So yeah. um, a question was asked about how do you um, handle um, everyday life, handling trials and tribulations, going through different things when you feel low and you don't feel enough and you like um, at a bad place or a dark place. How do you handle that? to get through it, to still be walking in your purpose, to still be serving or to still be going after God? How, how do you handle that? I won't lie to you. The la This last year was very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intense. I was just say intense where I actually processed and was able to feel the emotions and things that I was going through. So I had uh -huh. some dark, depressed moments in this past year. But what I did notice is that I did, I did keep serving. And I tried not to allow my emotions or what I was dealing with stop me from my purpose. So I think a lot of times we we isolate or we decide to just stay back or like everybody can see the shame. I had to I walked out some things in front of some people that had heard, you know, a, a different story of how it went. No one talked to me. No one asked me about it. And I knew that it felt like I was in a room of people that were talking about me, but not to me. But it was for me to hold my posture. So the whole thing was hold my posture and hold my mouth and watch my confession. So instead yeah. of point blame, or instead of saying, you know, Lord, well, I know this, or I know that, or, you know, just the neck rolling or being angry, <laughs> like, what are you really, what are you really upset at? Or what is the problem? And it really took me getting to a point where I was able to sit and be honest with myself and with God and write out, you know, name the emotion. It's okay to be angry. As Christians, I think we try to avoid anger or that we're sad or that we're depressed. Like, no, I was sad. I was angry. My heart was broken. I was upset, you know, yeah. but at the end of it all, you go back to what, well, what does God say about you? Because even when those dark, those dark thoughts creep up in your mind of, well, you're not good enough. Nobody wants you. Nobody's going to choose you. No one's going to listen to that. Like I really found myself, um, I would say those things and then follow with that's not true. So no one's going to like your music. That's not true. You know, and, and capturing those thoughts, saying it out loud. We don't say it necessarily out loud to give it power. But once you hear it, you can counter it with what God says about you, because those are all lies. Those are all lies from the enemy. God gives us things that are lovely, pure and true. Yeah. And the, the enemy is not giving us any of that. So imposter syndrome, um, just being in your own way, being depressed or feeling like no one's going to want to hear this or vulnerability is weakness. And it's not. It's actually the things that you don't want to release that we keep close to chest that's going to actually help somebody else. Yeah. And then it says in the Bible, be angry, but sin not. Like you said, right. I'm gonna say that because a lot of people be feeling like they can't get mad, but it's how you handle it. How do right. you handle the different dilemmas or challenges you might have being in the industry working by allowing your faith and your ministry to stay firm, even though you know it could be difficult or they could have you feeling a certain way? How do you navigate to that? We gotta keep our mouth shut. <laughs> like, because I think <laughs> we got to keep our mouth shut. Because the thought, just because you think it doesn't mean you have to say it. And I think once you realize, you know, not even just as a Christian, as, you know, in a corporate industry, in any type of industry, we're walking in. And once you say you're a Christian, people are looking at you differently anyway. They're expecting certain things. They may even poke at you more trying to get a response out of you. So if you can hold your tongue and keep your heart posture, like, okay, Lord, or figure out, okay, I would advise anyone, figure out what the reason is that you are in that space. You know, if it's just temporary, it's, you needed to pay your mortgage, then you needed to pay your mortgage. But don't complain about the other little things, because I think a lot of times the complaining and then once we fall into the trap of complaining and now we're upset with everybody else or gossiping with everybody else, we look just like them. So how are we supposed to affect change? You know, so, um, yeah, I would say, number one, just keep your keep it, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, if it's not adding value, just <laughs> hold on. Hold on to that till you just hold till you get in the car till you get home and then tell God all about it. <laughs> right. And a lot of times, like I, I be hating when people just try to put us in a box and isolate us as we supposed to just be Christian. So they they think we supposed to act a certain way, walk a certain yeah. certain time. Like, but they don't know that we we're dope. Like we we're, we're creative. Like God made us after Him and His enemy. So you know, um, we not just basic, and it's not like the old days. You know, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. So you know, we supposed to let our light shine. So just like in all the different facets of the music, the media, the modeling, the producing that you're doing, you letting your light shine for God. You know, because He's blessed you with those gifts and talents that you're using, but for Him, and you're still serving. Because a lot of times. People have a lot of different things going on. Now they're not serving. 
So you got all this going on. You got a hot single, but guess what? You on the couch, you behind every Tuesday or Monday with the uh, yeah. camera, you still serving, you know, and God is going to bless you because you're, you're humble and you, you giving it back as a son, you know, and, and, and that's what real important, like never stop serving, never stop serving, no matter what you got on, find a way to be able to sow see into others. Have your, how has your faith been in the, um, like not your faith, but how has it been with your ministry and you like uh, ministering to people um, in the industry or in your career or whatever? How do you approach that? Do you allow them to to talk to you about it, or you just Holy Spirit tell you like you need to say something to her? Or how does you how do you handle that? It's happened in different ways. Um, if, <laughs> I always find myself in the space where there's somebody randomly crying in the bathroom. And I'm like, Lord, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm, okay. Okay, you're doing okay. You know, just a simple question, but not not to just go in like, you know, Jesus this and the Bible that. I think it takes, I think relationship takes time to build anyway. So people will come to me that are comfortable, you know, if they feel like it's a safe space, but then also understanding how to navigate their personality or the circumstance because people have a different knowledge level when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to Christ, when it comes to the Bible. So I do appreciate the fact that uh, Holy Spirit is giving me the ability to approach things from a practical standpoint. And I'm I'm able to flip certain parables or certain stories into a practical application. So it's like, okay, think about it like this, you know, and make it make sense in yeah. a world view, but it's still a biblical principle. Yeah. And, and that'll make somebody want to be able to, you ain't just preaching to them, you breaking it down and understanding, right. breaking down playing for them. Um, what do you like better? Do you like making the music or performing the music? Ooh, I like both. Both. And then, yeah, yeah I like and making the music because I hear the sounds. A lot of it starts. So, you know, some people, they need a track first to, to create. I've noticed that I create better from nothing. Like if it's, a, it's usually a sound or a melody and then kind of building on that, building the harmonies, like all the harmonies and the arrangements and stuff you hear in past me not like I did those. So it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that all those people in this song are me. <laughs> wow. But the oohs and the ahs and and everything. And I was blessed to be linked up with um, Joshua Five Ash is actually who who produced the music. And we just sat down. We would just sit in the room and just kind of go. Um, but performance wise I'm I'm getting better with performance so my first solo performance was uh last year at Soul Case at 325 during the summer mm -hmm. that, that was my first time performing solo so I've seen background with bands and things like that but that was my first time on the stage by myself and even that I've always said like oh I would love to sing with a live band you know you get those opportunities but yeah. I think um uh, Sometimes it's again we're in our own way, so we're timid when it comes to certain things because you're so concerned about what how it's going to be presented or what people are going to think. But even with my voice, like what does that sound like to me? Or it doesn't sound like everybody else. Or you know, I always take it somewhere jazzy, but maybe everybody doesn't like that. But get in this space or like, no, you are unique. Like I made you this way for a reason. The people who who will support it will support it, and the ones who don't, that's okay too. You know, but the people who are connected to my voice will never be able to move on that if I keep myself muzzled. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to make more music and I'm excited to perform. So I, I can't say now it's definitely both. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't open yourself up to be able to release and, and get active. What do you yeah. plan on? How long do you plan on working a single? Is there other music in the makings? Do you want to work with other producers or different people? Oh, absolutely. I I love all types of music. I, I would like my music to be an array. I like Pass Me Not gives like neo gospel, gospel, neo soul, jazz kind of feel. Um, but I've sang the CCM, I've sang the choir, I've sang the the folk kind of music. So I feel like it's a good fusion of those things. I would love to work with different producers, um, just to have an array of different things. Someone described it once as certain producers, it's like a painter. If you only have so many colors, you know, you can only make so many visuals but different different painters have different brushes so different producers are going to put different sounds on things and you you never know what you're going to get and I, I i would never close myself off to that i'm super open i love all types of music i'm not really a heavy metal fan but if you want to <laughs> throw some like some rock some country you know jazz all of that in there i'm i'm open for it yeah, yeah. definitely I, I i got an instrumental that i'm doing a purpose challenge for a lot of the musicians that are the yeah artists. Um, you know, recording or doing interviews, but I'm gonna send it your way, and you can do yeah. it a little bit, and you know, send well, it I look back. forward to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
one good thing because I was on a panel. Um, shout out to the Kingdom Grind uh, DJ Network. Uh, I was with them. We was at a, a listening party and um, we were talking to the different artists about how to get their music out. About uh, what do the consumer want to hear? Two questions. What do you do or what are you thinking on doing to make sure that you continue to spread your music and to get it out? And um, what ways in the future would you be putting your music out like every week or is it once in a while? Like what's the time span? Do you want to keep on making music? Because it seems like you got that fire burn. Are you going to keep on going or are you just going to work? Is you trying to build towards a project? How that look for you? Oh, that's a good question. So in my mind, when I put, I didn't have a plan, like I said, when I put this one out. So now I'm looking at, you know, different themes throughout the year. So we're going up on Christmas. It would be really dope if I could get a, a Christmas song out <laughs> in December. You know, it's in the season already, but, but I um I do want to do more music, like looking for different opportunities to, to, to build my reps and to perform and just looking for those outlets because it's not just about the music. It's also about speaking. And I feel like the music has opened the door. Even our conversation right now. Yeah. Um, has been it is something like that's really been on my heart to be able to talk to people and really talk about my journey. Um, but yeah, so I'm I dare I say once a month, minimum once a quarter, I should put songs out. The question about the project, I'm not completely sure yet because I I worked on a project kind of before, but it wasn't who I want to present to present myself as an artist. But I think once a quarter at minimum would be fair, but definitely the goal I want to go for once a month and it'll probably just be singles for a little while until I get into a vein. So to, to actually do a project. So right now I'm on and we're going, you know, professionalism <laughs> is like, we go, we're just getting it done and out, like create, release and just revive what, what needs to be revived. Yeah. <laughs> whether it's on a single or whether it's on your album, I feel like it will be super dope just by the anointing that you have. If before a song, I don't know if it's a skit or a prelude before the song come yeah. on, if you yeah. minister and, you know, get to speaking into it because your voice, what you have to say, people need to hear. It. Like, I feel like you have a, a thing for the singles that they can really gravitate for it the right way, because a lot of times the singles and people in their singleness, they're grabbing a little bit from here, grabbing a little bit from there, yeah. trying to work. So if you don't have to go through trial and error by listening to the word, by listening to somebody who already been there, you know, yeah. um, that's what you should be able to listen to because we overcome by the blood and the words of our testimony. So our testimony right. is able to give people uh, another look at things like a different view. That's why I started to spotlight things, to spotlight different people for their journey. So you can see, man, she did that, man. I've been through that same thing. A lot of people been through, you know, going through hurt, sadness, and they don't tell nobody or they just think, man, it's me. You know, something's wrong with me. No, God still wants you. He still wants yeah. to you want you to come as you are for he can show you that he loves you for he can change your life for he can be a vessel to you and you know and a lot of people they're not you know having that resources for people can be able to minister to them that's why i love what you do even with the lives even you know putting that word out because it's much needed somebody gonna scroll down and hear that word it's gonna have them connected now they watching embassy every sunday and tuesday you know now you know and now they dialed in because that's what we need what would you yeah. say to um, a young lady um, that might be struggling with um, being uh, not confident in herself and dealing with identity. Ooh, that's <laughs> identity is always the root. Not knowing your identity is always the root of a lot of issues. I think we face, and as a young as a young lady, if I had to talk to myself as a young girl. Um, it would definitely be what they say, take your mind off them little boys. <laughs> like, it, it, sounds, it sounds so cliche. My dad used to say that in his own way. I cannot repeat what he would say, but it's just one of those things of like, I feel like, um, you know, as young girls, sometimes we're, we're seeing like girls are developing faster. Some are developing slower. Um, I was, I, I'm still slim now, but I was super skinny. Like, so everybody was developing before me and it was just like, what do I have? Or like, what can grab their attention? So sometimes we turn to our bodies or we we turn to different things, but I really think it's important to, I would tell a young, a young lady, you know, value your body. Like you are important. Your body is, you are worthy of love. You deserve respect. You know, as God tells us that we are lovely and we are beautiful, we are strong, we are powerful women. You know, our minds are our greatest assets and we deserve someone that will respect that in the same way that God, the same way that God loves us. We yeah. first have to love ourselves that way, but also in setting a standard 
then we have something to bump it up against. So definitely study your word because that's where you'll see what God says about you. And then when you meet people, you'll know what that looks like. So you got a lot of people claiming, I love you, you know, or, oh, you're the cutest thing. Or you were like, hey, girl, I love you. Just trying, just trying to get, just trying to get in between, you know? And yeah. it's like, well, what does love mean to you? So I always tell people when they come up in a relationally like that, if someone comes to you saying like, I love you in the Bible, it says love is patient. Love is yeah. kind. Love is not yeah. jealous. If you can't put that person's name where love is, that's not love. Damn, is, so. is is he is he patient? Is he kind? Is he waiting for you? Like when you say what you want, is it a problem? Are y'all arguing about that? So um, it really goes back to just being valued and valuing your body, valuing yourself, and really studying and and getting a relationship with God. Yeah. What would you say to the singles in the church? You know, you're single, you're going to church, you see somebody else. Sometimes people from the outside, it looks like they're really on fire for God, but behind closed doors and outside of church is something else. What would you say for the singles can be cautious? Because that is a lot of reasons. A lot of people that I talk to stop going to church because they seen somebody and they thought, you know, hey, we can be both going to church, be both on fire for God and they get hurt. So what are some things they can do? to allow themselves to be cautious for they don't put themselves in that situation or in that predicament check the fruit <laughs> so they, the, the fruits of the spirit check the fruit first but um first let me let me shout out uh, apostle brian meadows and lady from sure. and embassy city um awesome awesome leaders spiritual parents and um like he always says like give it time like allow things to grow and become friends first so you can actually see a person in different seasons I've personally got caught up in that, you know, at church where it's a matter, sometimes it's just a matter of availability. So it's like, oh, we go to the same church, we go to church together and this should work because I see them worshiping, I see them serving. But like you said, on that backside, well, what does their life look like? So, you know, you always see them helping in church or you always see them there or serving, but at home, they're angry, they're mean, you know, the house isn't together, the finances aren't together, things like that. So that's when I say, check the fruit. It looks good, the tree looks good, but when you shake it, yeah. Or what kind of fruit are falling off? Or like, is when it gets blown, like, what kind of fruit are you getting? And you know, just see, like, Apostle talks about seed potential and things like that. But the type of tree or the fruit that it's producing may not be the fruit for you. Yeah, definitely. that's the other thing. So it goes back, even with, like I said to the young lady, you know, have a standard and know what you want and don't feel like, oh, well, just because I'm in church. I think a lot of times, too, um, women in general and women in the church as a Christian. We confuse that with having to just take anything or showing grace or showing forgiveness. You can forgive somebody and show them grace, but keep them at a distance. Showing someone grace doesn't mean that you have to allow them access to you to a certain point. And it also doesn't mean that you have to, there's a difference in showing grace for someone that's growing through a challenge versus just accepting abuse, you know? And I think that happens a lot of times in the church too, because it's the right thing to do as a Christian or in the church you have to do this or you have to do that. There is a level of healthy boundary that can be kept. And I think that because we don't set boundaries, and I think Elder Tiffany Buckner also anointed fire. She also yeah. said, you know, once we, we never had a standard in the beginning. So when we try to set boundaries later in the relationship and they push on those boundaries or they're not able to establish it because we never, we never gave them a point to start in the first place. Uh -huh. Shout out Tiffany Buckner too. She got great. Uh makes a great woman of God. And it's Absolutely. great to opportunity and have different people to be able to watch, to be able to talk to. How important is it for the youth to be able to realize who they are around and who they are connected to, whether in the church or out of the church? How important is that and what should they look for? For the youth, it is absolutely important. Um, I know growing up in the church, you see certain things, or if your parents are in leadership, you may see a certain version of them versus the, the one at church and the one at home. Um, I think it's important for them to look for mentors and to be okay with correction. Um, I also think that it's it's good for the youth to be involved and be engaged. So don't, you, you know, teens kind of get in the space of, you know, you're trying to figure out your identity or you're trying to be cool. You don't want to go to church. <laughs> you don't want to be always talking about the Bible, but yeah. really just honing in on that identity and finding those people that align with who you would like to be when you grow up, you know, like, I, oh, I want to be like this person or whatever. And then actually taking the opportunity to even reach out to them to say, hey, do you have an opportunity for me? Could could we sit and talk? Could we just have a conversation? I think just opening the line of communication, because sometimes people don't know that the children want to talk or that the youth want to talk. 
And then the youth are wondering why no one's talking to me or no one notices that I'm not talking. So it's, it's a two-way street, definitely, but there's absolutely nothing wrong. I definitely advise the youth to speak up. And if you want to have a conversation with someone, then, then try to make that happen. Yeah. And a million dollar question. What do you do to keep yourself grounded and to make sure that you're taking care of you because you serve, because you have ministry, because you have all these different things and you're pouring into people. So what do you do to refill you to make sure that you're grounded and you connected? I do. Um, I've started setting a boundary, so I do not accept things that are not my responsibility. That's one when it comes to serving, because I think we can get in a hole sometimes like, well, this isn't being done. Let me just do it. And then you end up stuck in that space. Um, yeah. I do schedule time for myself in these moments where I'll, I'll turn the electronics off. I turn the phone off. You know, I may not be on social media for a while and just it's okay to say no. I learned that my no is powerful and that it's okay to say no. Nothing shuts down. You know, nobody dies because I'm not there and learning to delegate. So right now, um, so actually I'm the, one of the media directors at NBC City and mm. I've, I've learned like we're developing systems, but being able to delegate has helped that a lot also. So it's not all falling on me because people want to help, but I think sometimes we just, oh, I know how to do it. I can do it faster. So we hold it close to chest, but learning how to delegate, um, setting up your systems, actually knowing what you're doing and scheduling my, I schedule my own time. That's one thing. So when we're constantly just being pulled all over the place, it's difficult to bring someone else into that or to even find time for yourself. So I'm extremely intentional about finding time for myself. I have my worship music blasting, you know, when I'm at work, I'm at home, it'd be a whole praise break happening there. I know my neighbors probably be like, what is good? Cause it's one of those large like party speakers too. House yeah. just be jumping. <laughs> House just jumping. Um, but yeah, but making sure, like making sure I pray, making sure I get up and being like being very intentional with my time and where it's going. Yeah, because you, you're you needed in a time like this. So you have to make sure that you're having self-awareness so you can be charged yeah. because it's that needing a word that you got or somebody needing to hear you at the moment that they need to and you can't come up short because yeah. you didn't do that you know you know it would just be like sad but being that you're intentional you're making sure you're doing the different things um how can for the consumers and the people what can we do to support artists like you what can we do to make sure that we're sewing into you to make sure that we're promoting you to make sure that we're doing everything we can to value the product that you put out because making products is not just i'm putting a song out and ain't this it take your time effort booth time uh thoughts because you put yeah. a song emotion and all like that what can we do to support y'all to make y'all the best artist as possible oh uh, well of course sewing is always an option um i will say pass me not was definitely a love project and the people that helped me and support it were 100 on board um i have a cash app it's it's i am ariel sutton the same as my instagram um definitely praying you know and making sure that I'm, I'm staying strong and, and getting that out and when something is coming up just support uh support share like it's the simple things like and like I said I'm so overwhelmed by the response right now because it's I never would have expected that and there are other things coming out you mentioned about the single it's almost like you you prophetic so oh, I, <laughs> oh, but I'm working on, I'm working I'm actually working on something right now it's not a song necessarily but it's definitely a resource and a tool that will help people propel forward um, in their relationship so I'm super excited about that so when it comes out you know just support grab a copy of whatever it is I'm putting out and um just share it yeah and if you think of anything you know any events or anything like that that could use use me or I could you know have an impact then definitely let me know yeah I definitely will reach out and everybody come check the scene go out yeah yeah <laughs> that says we're gonna be supporting you we gonna thank be you we're gonna be getting this out I'm putting this on the uh, Kingdom Ride radio show that's coming out keep sharing it on that aspect as well you know i just want you to continue to walk in your purpose continue to grind continue to let god be the source of your strength your life and allow him to be able to leave you may your steps be ordered may anything that you touch and put your hands on be blessed and may god be able to bless you for your obedience and you know your servitude because you serve a lot and you give to others so it's god that's going to be able to bless you because he can handle and you can trust he can trust you and you can handle with what he's giving you. And just like with this, this project, don't let this stop you. Go on, push yourself and allow God to be the source like he have been. Keep putting it out and the right people going to hear it. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I mean, I definitely appreciate the support. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate this because, like I said, I know you're busy with your time and effort, but we're gonna support you. We're gonna keep on sharing the thing, tag you, tag everybody, you. You, and that's how we're doing as far as the support. I'm gonna sew into you as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's thank been you. great. Thanks for coming along. Everybody go out, pass me not is available on all our streams. You know, <laughs> it's been great. Thank you.